Sony, good job. You know, there's one thing Sony is normally good at. It's a fucking shit up. You know, they made a, they did a gr great, phenomenal job with Ghostbusters. It was incredible. You know, the, the reboot with uh, the all-female cast. I don't think the all-female cast had anything to do with the film being very bad, but it was, you know, coincidentally an all-female cast, and it was terrible. The best thing about the film was Chris Hemsworth, and I only watched, like, 30 minutes of it. But Sony, they can't keep their dick in their pants, and I think at the same time, I think Marvel has the same, the same problem here. They also couldn't keep their penis, you know, zipped up. They couldn't do it. So it's come to this scenario, even though Sony is led by, uh, I think, Spider-Man is Amy Pascal. It's come to this scenario where now Spider-Man is no longer going to be a part of the MCU. Sad, you know, something which at this point in the MCU doesn't really make sense. I see why Sony have done it, because they basically had all the leverage, really. You know, Spider-Man has become even more of a popular character over the last couple of years, and now he's actually loved by the public, whereas with Andrew Garfield, specifically that second Amazing Spider-Man film, there's a fly. You know, people didn't really love that film for good reason. It was shit. Spider-Man 3 was bad, you know, but it still had a nostalgic... Whenever I watch it, it has a nostalgic feel, even though I acknowledge it's not a good film. They have Spider-Man at the highest stock it's probably ever been cinematically. I mean, Far From Home just made a billion dollars, 1.1 billion, so it's the highest grossing Sony film ever. And Marvel came to the table and said, well, we're going to re renegotiate the deal now. Uh, Spider-Man's been in five MCU films, I think, four or five, which is a lot. I mean, he was in Civil War... Homecoming, Endgame, oh, Infinity War and Far From Home. Yeah, he's been in five MCU films so far. Two of them, you know, Sony produced predominantly and then three of them were team-up films, essentially. So that's where they can have, like, interaction with Marvel characters. So the deal broke down, apparently, because Marvel wanted to make the Spider-Man solo films a co-production, essentially, between Marvel, Disney and Sony. And Sony just said, well, we like the deal we have because we're making all the money off it, because they are making all the money off it, even though Spider-Man is essentially being leased out, <clears throat> leased out to, to Disney when they're in team-up films. I think that's sort of how the, 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 deal, the deal did work in the end. The problem is, Marvel have shot themselves in the foot here, because, well, one, they ended Far From Home, at a cliffhanger and it was the end point of phase three in the MCU. It was the final film in phase three. It was the Ant-Man of phase two. What they've done is they've completely rocked the boat here because as well as Spider-Man Far From Home end ending on, on a complete cliffhanger as to where Peter Parker is as a character now, he also was sort of the face of the MCU in a lot of ways. The way they positioned him was to be the de facto you know, face of the MCU. Not really the leader of the MCU, because I feel that that will probably go down to Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and unfortunately Captain Marvel. Um, but he was sort of the focal point, or one of the people who were going to push forward and bring this new wave of, of MCU films in the next 10 years. <sighs> Which is sad, because I think that, you know... At the end of the day, people have disagreements. I think that the way this has blown up, there is a chance that Sony and, and Disney can come back to the table and potentially actually try and figure out a deal. I don't know. I don't know how realistic it is. I don't. Because these are really, really big studios, really, really big egos at the end of the day. And I don't know if they'll, they'll actually come to a deal again. I think it was incredibly beneficial at the start of this entire process. And I think it's still good now because regardless as to how I feel about the Spider-Man solo films, I think Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man we've ever had. I think Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2, Tobey Toby Maguire, are significantly best, best films in my opinion. Even though I, I'm glad we got to see Mysterio in a unique way. Um, and Vulture as well. But those two original Spider-Man films are for me better films categorically than Homecoming and Far From Home. Now, obviously, what Sony wants to do is just put Spider-Man into their Venomverse, essentially. That's what they want to do. They want to 
I don't know if they're going to call it Spider-Man 3. I don't know if Tom Holland's still going to definitely be involved. I don't know if John Watts, the writer and director, is going to be involved or if they're going to go with a whole new team. And a new Spider-Man, I don't see why you would go with a new Spider-Man. But at the same time, if they'd have to give Spider-Man a completely different suit and a completely different look to the one he currently has now and the iterations they've given. I mean, we've already done Iron Spider. We've done the stealth suit. We've done the, the Stark suit as well. We had the bloody... the pseudo hoodie suit as well that we got to see a little bit of so we've seen all these suits but sony i don't think can use any of those suits properly without marvel's consent so they might have to go with a completely different direction with the design of the suit as well which is now very very weird um now venom made a lot of money i think it sort of made it sort of made Sony a bit big for their boots when Venom made like 800 million. They were like, well, bloody hell, we can do this. Because that's like, I think that's the almost the, it may have been the highest grossing Spider-Man film ever and it didn't have Spider-Man in it. I th Actually, maybe, I think Spider-Man 3 grossed more than Venom. But other than that, I don't think any of the others have. Other than Far From Home just now. Um, and considering the budget Venom had, I think it led them to say, well, imagine if we put Spider-Man in here, we would make a billion dollars with this film. Venom was fun. It wasn't the best film in the world, but it was, you know, different. I think Tom Hardy did a good job playing a weirdo, you know. Um, so I think they want to insert him in there. Now, they're looking to do a Craven the Hunter film. They've already announced they're doing a Morbius film with Jared Leto. They want to do a Silver and Black. I think maybe this is not good for Sony. I think... You had an arrangement that was making you money. Now, the reason why they want to take it away is because they want to make more money more quickly. Because by having this deal with Marvel, they can't make a Spider-Man film every two years. Because if you looked at Phase 4, there was no Spider-Man on there. Maybe that was because Disney knew that this was potentially going to happen. But really, there should have been a Spider-Man film in that Phase 4. There, there probably should have been. And there's not. There's, I mean, there, it, it's problematic. And it's, I think it's really shaken up where the MCU is going to go. And, uh... I just think people need to calm down, calm their emotions, get in a room together, and figure it out. Now, I know the deal was originally that Marvel would only get, Marvel Disney would only get 5% of, or 10% of total gross revenue from any Spider-Man solo film. And now they're looking that to get 50-50 by also putting in 50% of production budget and marketing and all that stuff. So, r really, it's about Sony not wanting to not make less money. You know, it's not about Sony making a lot more money. It's about Sony not wanting to lose the one thing that, for them, makes them money consistent, consistently regardless. Because every Spider-Man film has been profitable to some extent. When, and we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars here, so it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of dosh. But I just hope that eventually they'll figure out a solution because I want to see Spider-Man back in the MCU. I want to see Spider-Man have a film with Doctor Strange, you know, just for a bit. I want to see that interaction properly again. Um, it's something which I thought could be a great thing from 2016 when Spider-Man was first first introduced. I was like, I want to see him interact with Doctor Strange. We got a bit of it in Infinity War. And I just want, I want more of it. Okay. So, Tony, don't screw this up. Marvel, Disney also, don't screw this up. Because you've created something actually very unique here. Something that's really not really been seen before ever. By being able to, by being able to work collaboratively between studios. It's a good sign. It shows unity. It's a good, good message to be put forward. Continue it. That would be great. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to that channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, then Venom himself will come after you, all right? He's eating up everything at this point. He's eating up Spider-Man as well. You don't want that, you really know, so just subscribe anyway to avoid that. Now, I've been the original of the comic. You have been great. I'll see you next time. Skadoosh.